All right, let's talk about some of the solo modes and one shortcut that I find really helpful when working with solos. I'm sorry my voice is gone. Just before we start, I just want to apologize. My voice is gone. I don't know what to tell you about it. I don't know what to do about it. Slowly, it's coming back, so hopefully it'll be back soon. But with that said, what I wanted to talk about today, I was kind of setting this up to do a little demonstration. Um, these are two of my songs, so, that, you know, copyright, blah, 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 whatever. But I was going to do a demonstration that was talking about this one trick involving when you're working with reference tracks. But I got a little distracted, and I remembered that this one thing kind of drove me a little bit crazy for a while. And, um, you know, like a while, a while back. And so some people online might be wondering about it, might find this helpful, might find this useful. So I'm getting a little sidetracked. I'm going to do this video first. So the first thing that I wanted to talk about today is that within your options menu, you have solo modes, right? So um, we can talk about this in a different video. What we're going to be talking about here are these bottom three options. So I think of latch as being like the normal way that solo mode works. Um, maybe that's just because I tend to live in it myself personally, and the people that I learned from tended to live in latch. But the way latch mode works, right, is that if you solo something, it stays soloed. You know, for example, I'm not clicking and holding down the button. If I add another solo, now I have two tracks soloed. I have to click it to unsolo it, that kind of thing, right? So we have that mode. And then we have the X or OR. And basically what that does, it explains it in the description here. I'll return to the description so we can see it, um, is that it cancels the previous solo. So it's basically like, hey, you can only have one solo at a time. So in this mode, if I solo this one, and this can be really helpful if you're um, comparing two different tracks, right? Whether that's whole tracks or tracks within your session. If you want to kind of A-B test stuff really quick, you can jump into this mode. And when you click the other track, it unsolos the previous one, right? So that can be very helpful. I don't tend to live in this mode, but it can be helpful to know about, especially if you're trying to A-B test two different things. So then the other mode is momentary. And this one's like, I think maybe the least commonly used one. And I'll just click this to undo it. But the way it works is it's kind of like a walkie talkie. You have to click and hold down on it for it to be soloed. So I can click and hold and it's soloed. And as soon as I release, it's gone right? It's no longer soloed. It's back in the whole mix with everything else. So that's how momentary works. I hope that kind of makes sense. Now I'm going to swap back to the mode that I like to live in personally. It's up to you what you want to be in, but I like to be in latch. So I'm going to switch back to that and we're going to talk about um, comparing two things, right? So A-B testing, which is kind of what we've been talking about. But what I wanted to show you is that there's a shortcut that allows you to really quickly and easily toggle between two different tracks, soloing them without having to click. So I like doing this because I find that if I'm trying to A-B test two different tracks or two different elements within a track, for example, when I'm in this solo mode, right, if I wanted to switch to this one really quickly, I would have to unsolo that one as well, right? And that can be annoying, and maybe the other solo mode would fix that, right? But I find that it takes me out of the position of listening and comparing if I have to click a bunch, and I'd rather not have to click at all, right? So you could switch over if I was like A-B testing things. I could switch over to this um, X or mode, right? And I could do things that way and just have it be one click and it would quickly toggle between the two. But what I prefer to do is I prefer to use a shortcut. And so the shortcut is Shift S. But you'll notice if I hold Shift and hit S right now, it's not doing anything, right? It's not changing these solo states, right? So the trick here, and this is what kind of gets a lot of beginners, right, is that you have to look at where your actual cursor is within your edit window. So right now my cursor is on my master fader. So you'll notice that wherever your cursor is, is what's going to get toggled. So as opposed to choosing and highlighting the two tracks involved and then trying the shortcut, um, you have to focus more on where your actual cursor is. So for example, Right now, my cursor is just on this top track. So if I do Shift S, it's just going to toggle the solo state for that one, right? So Shift S to toggle solo state. But if I want to compare the two, what I can do is just solo one and then hold Shift and hit the semicolon. And so that highlights the two tracks. So the semicolon is like a down arrow in Pro Tools. It just retains where your highlight is. I use the P and the semicolon all the time for that kind of stuff. If you watch my channel, you might have seen that before. But that's what that is. So now I have the two tracks highlighted. So if I do Shift S, now it's really quickly A-B testing between the two without me having to shift into a different mode, right? So I like using this way a lot. Um, another thing you could do is if you dig into your settings here, let me find it really quickly. 
So if you link your track and edit selection, that'll do this for you as well. So you'll notice if I click over here, now my track selection is matching where my cursor is. So what I could do in that case, if I have that setting on, I don't like to live with that setting on. I don't really know why. I don't have anything really against that setting, but um, it automatically puts your cursor here for you. So you can do shift S and toggle that way. So if you do have that setting on, link track and edit selection, then you can just choose the nameplates for the tracks you want to A-B test and do it that way if that's easier for you. So I think that's about it. I think that's everything I wanted to talk about today. It's just a few little things about features within Pro Tools that help me when I'm comparing and contrasting and using the solo option. So um, the solo, the solo feature, right? The solo feature. All right. So that's about it. I hope you like this video. My voice is dead, so I'm trying not to talk too much. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. I have a Patreon. It's patreon.com slash Noise. My patrons get access to additional content. Um, most of what we've been focusing on lately is the Discord server. So feel free to check that out if you feel so inclined. And other than that, I come out with new videos every Wednesday. And thank you so much for watching and hanging out with me, even though my voice is shot. Okay, bye. Okay. Um, I would say something here, but I don't know what to say, and my voice is dead, so I probably shouldn't talk too much. So instead of talking here and having a little blooper reel, I'm going to try to film another video maybe, or maybe I should not film another video because, like, then I'm going to have more videos where my voice is shot. So this is the dilemma. Do I do more work later, or do I do it now and make everyone deal with my voice? I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. What do you think the answer is? It's too late. I've already made the decision if you comment about what the answer is, but... Um, it might help me in the future. I'll probably lose my voice again. Um, okay, bye.